name is Andrea Matos. I'm from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. Um, and my paper today is, uh, the title is English Teacher Education in Brazil, a review of past and present practices and future possibilities. The objective of this presentation is to make a short review of the area of English language uh, teacher education in general and its developments in Brazil, presenting also some possibilities for the future. To this aim, I will focus on my own path as an English language teacher and language teacher education and researcher. This is both because it's easier to talk about my own research and also just so that you get to know more about what I've been doing in these last 10 years or so that I've become a researcher. <clears throat> so uh, let's go through a little bit of history first. So language teacher education nowadays is certainly recognized as part of applied linguistics. Um, as a modern field of studies, applied linguistics dates back to the 1960s according to Block 2003. Uh, language teacher education may be older than that, um, especially uh, in Freeman's term. When, you focus, uh, when its focus was still on training second foreign language teachers to apply the techniques and strategies of the several methods and approaches to teaching foreign languages available at that time, the aim of this type of training was only to make teachers familiar with a specific method of instruction so that they would become better teachers in the sense of being specialists in the step-by-step -step nature of the chosen foreign language method. <clears throat> According to Freeman, 2000, second language teacher uh, education describes the field of professional activity through which individuals learn to teach second languages. The term teacher education refers to the sum of experiences and activities through which individuals learn to be language teachers. Several researchers in language teacher education make a difference between um, teacher training and teacher development. I'm not going uh, very much into this difference, but roughly speaking, Training is something that can be presented or managed by others, whereas development is something that can only be done by and for oneself. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, based on Wallace 1991 and Freeman, Freeman 2000. Some other researchers also take the same point of view. Some research perspectives that have influenced uh, foreign language teacher education. Towards the end of the 1980s and throughout the 1990s, there, has, there was a big uh, shift in teacher education away from the perspective of training, adopting a new perspective on, on teacher development. Uh, however, in 1996, in a groundbreaking article in the field of teacher education, Freeman discussed the relationship between teacher and um, between research and teaching, and highlighted its hierarchical and unidirectional uh, nature. He argued that you have to know the story in order to tell the story, and called our attention to a central dilemma in the field of foreign language teacher knowledge, the eternal divorce between research and teaching. Freeman, 1996, says that researchers have frequently taken an outsider's view of teachers' experiences and suggests that an insider's view would be more appropriate. Um, <clears throat> so just going over this idea of outsider, insider. So Freeman groups research on teacher education into three different trends, depending on the point of view assumed by the researcher and the, import, the importance of the contributions of the participant teacher, the behavioral view, uh, the cognitive view, and the interpretivist view. The behavioral view is seen as a still life of behaviors or a landscape of activities. These are his terms, okay? As the name suggests, it focuses on the behavior of the teacher inside the classroom. In this view, the researcher is the observer like here, people observing the um, pictures on the wall, 
um, <clears throat> the researcher is the observer of what teachers do in the classroom, and teachers' actions are frequently related to what students learn as a result. This trend, as Freeman says, views teaching as doing things and tends to codify extremely complex processes, simplifying teaching by not attending to the role that teachers and learners as thinking people play within it. The cognitive view focuses on teachers' mental processes, their perceptions and intentions, their beliefs, knowledge and attitudes, as well as affective dimensions such as feelings of anxiety and fear that are undoubtedly present in their daily practice, shaping their thoughts and actions. The view includes research on teacher cognition or teacher thinking, that are uh, different names for the same type of research, which tries to relate what teachers think before lessons or pre-active decisions to what they think during lessons or interactive decisions, as, as these actions are called. Um, so, aiming at uh, understanding how teachers interpret their own practice in relation to the specific context they work in, Freeman suggests an alternative trend, the interpretivist, in, sorry, interpretivist view, which tries to view teaching as knowing what to do, and intends to cater not only to the researchers' conclusions, but also to the voices of the participant teachers. Um, this is just a, still a historical view of what's been done in, in language teacher education. So some research perspectives. <coughs> mostly dominated by qualitative, uh, by qualitative paradigms in terms of research perspectives on data collection and analysis, both in native and non-native speaking settings, the field of language teacher education has been fruitful in raising awareness on the various problems, tensions, and conflicts present in, in the teaching processes, besides bringing insights into teacher knowledge and practices one such research perspectives. Narrative research, for example, based on Kasnade and Schachter, 1997, and Clandini and Connolly, two Canadian researchers, 2000. Um, and also social cultural views, for example, Crunch and Lantoff, 2000, Lantoff and Thorne, 2006, on teacher education, have also opened up space for studying teacher voice and choice helping both researchers and teachers better understand the context-bound nature of teacher activity. Research and practice in teacher education in Brazil have closely followed international perspectives and advances in the area. And Brazilian researchers and teacher educators, as well as teachers themselves, have greatly benefited from research results that have illuminated pra uh, classroom practices especially in English as a foreign language teaching and, and learning contexts. And I have here a list of Brazilian researchers that have worked in this area, uh, like uh, Jimenez, Almeida Filho, Lefa, I can circulate the paper later, I'm just not so, we don't waste time here. Uh, drawing on Freeman's um, 1996 suggestions for an inter interpretivist view on teacher education, in my MA thesis, I conducted a study about uh, an EFL teacher's <coughs> interpretations of her classroom, of her classroom events from her own point of view, based on her interpretations of her teaching experiences. The participants' perceptions included not only her beliefs about teaching and learning, but also all other perceptions and interpretations about various subjects and, and events. This is a representation of, of, of some of the conclusions in my main um, thesis. Um, the participant teacher reveals that her classroom practice was influenced by a number of different elements, which may e either uh, be a positive or a negative influence. Uh, here, positive and negative influences. Uh, or may take the form of pressures originated inside the classroom, like pedagogical pressures and interactional pressures, <clears throat> or outside the classroom, personal pressures and contextual pressures. 
So as I said, this this is the representation of these results. This this is supposed to be the the classroom as a closed context, and this is the wider context. Okay. So just, this is just a summary, but we can talk about that later. At this time, the time of my MA research, okay, that was uh, before 2000. One of the most famous models for teacher education was this model, Wallace's reflective model. Um, he based his ideas on Sean, uh, 1983. So Wallace suggests that teacher education has two main components. This, uh, oh, sorry, here. Received knowledge and experiential knowledge. I'm not going to describe them. I'm running out of time already. Um, so Wallace says that development implies change and fruitful change is extremely difficult without reflection. So that's why he has this reflective cycle here. Practice feeds, uh, feeds into reflection and reflection feeds back into practice. Um, in his view, one of the major aims of the reflective model is to improve the quality and reflection in order to achieve increased professional development. The reflective model also argues that the trainee should reflect on the received knowledge and in the light of classroom experience so that classroom experience can feed back into the received knowledge sessions. So this is referred to as the reflective cycle, as I said. And this type of reflection has, has been also called critical reflection. So based on this model, this is another uh, result of my MA uh, thesis. So in my research, Wallace's reflective model was extended. The changes proposed for the model take into consideration that the growth in the teacher's professional competence feeds back uh, the process of reflection, which in its turn becomes more intense and is made at a deeper level. The professional development stage thus is not a, a closed cycle anymore, as proposed by Wallace, but becomes a spiral that leads to an ever-increasing professional competence. So here, instead of the cycle, I had the, the spiral that could go on forever. Although I finished my MA in 2000, the results of this research have just been published in English in, in this journal, which is available online. Um, I dare say that this is still the model that represents most of the research that is done in teacher education in Brazil. And maybe Valkyria will disagree, but we can talk about that later also. So uh, another possibility, as I said, is narrative research. Um, <clears throat> so I have also tried a little bit of narrative research through the concept of hope and hope stories, which is um, a kind of research that I, I first found when I was in Canada in 2006. Um, from researchers based at the Hope Foundation of Alberta in, in Edmonton. Um, so uh, again, I'm not going through all these definitions, uh, but if you're interested in research on hope, this is one type of, of my research that has only been published in English. This is also something that I can explain later because it will take some time. So basically I had uh, student teachers talk about their hopes. Um, so they, they had stories of hope, but also stories of hopelessness and how, how these um, hope stories and hopelessness story um, influence their practice uh, in classrooms. <coughs> Uh, so again, as I said, uh, this, this research is published in this book and also um, five chapters in this book are devoted to research on hope through narrative research. Um, there are three chapters by three different Canadian um, researchers, one Chinese can Canadian researcher and also my own. Um, okay my last five minutes, right, Carla? Um, some recent perspectives on teacher education. So the turn of the millennium has brought yet another perspective on, on teacher education and development. 
critical approaches to EFL teaching and foreign language teacher education, according to Norton and Tully, 2004, have lately raised in the interest of researchers in the field. In Brazil, these critical perspectives have been brought into attention after the publication of the National Curriculum Guidelines for High School Teaching by Miriam de Souza and Monte Moore here in 2006, which has fostered suggestions for implementing new literacy studies and critical literacy in foreign language uh, classrooms at high school level, especially in public schools. My own interest in language teacher education it stems from those previous perspectives um, cited here. Uh, so that was in 2000, 2002, 2003, when I had the, the Portuguese papers published, and then lately, uh, this, this last version, 2009 and 2013, the, English, the papers in English. Uh, but also, this interest has developed in, into these more recent critical approaches. So when I uh, finished my PhD research in 2011, this was already about critical literacy. My main interest is in critical literacy. And again, I'm not going through the definition, oops, the definition that I use here. There are several others. Not only, this is not the definition. This is only one possible definition. But you all know about uh, critical literacy. So my route as a teacher, as a researcher and teacher educator has led me to these border places, I think. At the same time, privilege, dominant at this site, because I teach in a higher education context within a large university located in the south, southeast of Brazil, an economically privileged region, but also subaltern, because it is a teaching course, a context for pre-service education, and, and related to public schools, which are historically undervalued areas of the educational field in Brazil, mostly considered on the margin of the so-called successful education. I have been lucky to publish my research both in English, as a chapter in this book, and also this, this may be out in less than a month, hopefully. So this one is in Portuguese. Um, so some of my critical work is already out. Uh, I guess some of you have already read um, these papers. Um, some future possibilities for foreign language teacher education, as I promised. So future perspectives for the field of foreign language teacher education and for myself as a teacher educator, in my view, will bring new developments focusing on preparing foreign language teachers to face new challenges in globalized settings and to implement critical approaches to teaching in their own classrooms. These new perspectives are focusing on the critical issues of power, identity, gender, um, race, and sexuality. For example, this was a paper that I presented in um, Sefeli in June, last June, together with Lena, Miriam, and Joe Wendell. Some of you uh, might have met them. Um, <clears throat> besides these critical themes, there are also more trivial things that may be brought into critical views depending on the attitude of the teacher. This is uh, based on the work of Ana Paula Duboc and Daniel Ferraz, and also some other work by Ana Paula, which is still to come. Also, some researchers in the critical field are now proposing to prepare foreign language teachers for social justice teaching. And this is based specifically on this book, um, which means, according to Zeigner, not only focusing on critical themes and helping teachers position themselves towards inequities in society, but highlights teachers' responsibility to serve as agents of social change. So I'll, I will stop here, but I want to finish with these words by Raymond Williams. He says that it is only in a shared belief and insistence that there are practical alternatives that the balance of forces begin to alter. 
Once the inevitabilities are challenged, we begin gathering our resources for a journey of hope. If there are no easy answers, there are still available, discoverable, hard answers, and it is these that we can now learn to make and share. Thank you very much.